Hey guys, so um, today I'm going to be doing one of my YouTube rambly videos because there is a bit of YouTube news that we're all going to be discussing, so prepare for your subscription feeds to be rather somewhat monotone for today, but it is a topic worth discussion. discussing. It is part of the adpocalypse, it is part of this big uh, crisis that YouTube and this corner of the internet is kind of going through when it comes to, uh, you know, all of these dimensions uh, with, with you know, YouTube trying to appease advertisers, creators trying to eke out a living, uh, and then you've got, you know, P Patreon and podcasters in, in the fray. Um, you know, this is this is a sort of a media space that's going through a huge transitional period now, and we're even seeing a lot of YouTube competitors trying to squeeze into the space. Um, I, I sort of think of things like uh, Library and, and BitChute, and I think there was another one, sort of DTube is a new one that I've heard people uh, going around. Uh, just as a quick note on that, actually, um, if you want to know where I stand on sort of future YouTube competitors, is that... Um, by and large, YouTube, well, I mean, everyone kind of knows, or at least everyone that sort of cares to have, have looked it up knows that YouTube is actually running at a loss, but uh, Google keep propping it up. And Google don't usually keep propping up um, parts of their company that are running at a loss. YouTube is this grand exception, and there are a lot of people that do think that YouTube might actually go away you know, within, say, the next 10 years because it can't keep running at a loss. But I feel that Google are sort of keeping YouTube around because it's just this its this complete monopoly. Any other video hosting platform just doesn't even come close to matching YouTube. And they have uh, a, a monumental power base in this website that no other company has the money that they can just throw into a single project like that. This is billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars, and it's growing all of the time. The fact of the matter is, uh, Websites like Vidme never stood a chance, and the only reason companies like Daily Motion are still around is because they make deals with television companies and um, uh, and all of that kind of stuff as well. In fact, Daily Motion seem to uh, be rolling back um, from their. Uh, smaller creators and just focusing on hosting, you know, TV shows for small cable companies and so forth as well. Um, they're more sort of a video hosting platform than YouTube, which is video hosting plus this social media side of things. Because, admittedly, hosting on you, you know, if we wanted to host media in general, it's not too difficult. Admittedly, we might have to reduce the the resolution of our video. We might even have to do it in a different format, like a podcast or whatever. But that, to be honest, isn't the the end of the world. The real reason why YouTube has the amount of power that it has is because of discoverability. I would not have a channel at all, uh, you know, if I, if, if I just put it up on, on somewhere like BitChute, where I get 50 to 100 views a video. Now, I like BitChute, most of the time, when the front page isn't full of uh, anti-Semitic stuff, but uh, the actual technology behind it and the um, the uh, the way that it's going looks really, really promising. And I'm hoping that as the the platform matures, um, it will um, be able to sort of um, manage to take some of those rather problematic elements on board with it. Um, you know, so particularly the hyper polit politicized. Uh, stuff there. A lot of people who just go on video sites are going to want to watch it for fun, not, you know, um, for flat earth conspiracy theories and whatnot. But anyway, I'm getting rather derailed. But anyhow, in short, yes, only Google and Google's money and Google's technology at this point in time with this current uh, sort of um, iteration of the internet, if you will, you know, only Google can run a YouTube site, only Google has the money, the infrastructure, the connections, the history, all of that. Um, and even they didn't build it themselves, they bought it, you know, they, they, they actually bought it. And um, yeah, there's no other, I can't imagine, I can't imagine uh, an another company being able to eke away, maybe like Amazon or, or, or if Microsoft did a really good job at a competitive platform, I probably I wouldn't move over to the, the Microsoft one. And to be honest, I, I gotta say, when it comes to like measuring up the, the ethics of the company Google versus Twitch, I probably think Google's probably a more ethical company, but um, anyway, I'll leave that one up to you. Today we've had a bit of news. They're changing, or YouTube rather, are changing the way that they're monetizing channels. Uh, they're actually uh, reverting to a rather similar system to the older system, where channels have to have, have reached and maintain a certain number of views and engagement and subscribers. 
so that they can keep being monetized. And as you can see here, I've got an email that I received from my Fun With Flags channel. So I run like a, about half a dozen uh, YouTube channels. I think a, a, about three of those are monetized, one of which is uh, Fun With Flags, and the rest are just sort of, uh, they're you know, unmonetized channels. Fun With Flags fit into the criteria where it was monetized. It was monetized as part of my overall um, you know, channel monetization set up. Um, but this channel doesn't match the threshold for the new YouTube monetization guidelines. It, uh, In fact, it says here, in fact, let's, let's just read the letter. Fun with flags. Today we are announcing changes to the YouTube partner program. While our goal remains to keep the YPP open to as many channels as possible, we recognize we need more safeguards in place to protect creator revenue across the YouTube ecosystem. So what's changing? Under the new eligibility requirements announced today, your YouTube channel, that's fun with flags, not this one, just fun with flags, uh, is no longer eligible for monetization because it doesn't meet the new threshold of 4,000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. Okay, so that's actually, I believe, lower than the old, the very, very sort of early stages of getting your channel monetized where I believe you had to reliably get like 1,000 views per video. Uh, or was it a thousand views per day? It was, you know, it was like we were talking about uh, this channel would still meet that threshold now, but it was, I, I think it felt like a higher threshold to meet. Whereas 4,000 hours of watch time and a thousand subscribers is really not that very much, but I'll, I'll touch on that when I finish. As a result, your channel will lose access to all monetization tools and features associated with the YouTube Partner Program on February the 20th, 2018, unless you surpass this threshold in the next 30 days unless you uh, surpass this threshold in the next 30 days. According, um, accordingly, this email serves as 30 days notice that your YouTube partner program terms are terminated. One of YouTube's core values is to provide anyone the opportunity to earn money from a thriving channel. Creators who haven't yet reached this new threshold can continue to benefit from our Creator Academy, our Help Center, and all the resources on the Creator site to grow their channels. Once your channel reaches the new threshold, it will be reviewed to make it adhere to our policies and guidelines, and if so, monetization will be re-enabled. It'll be interesting to see how this goes down with the MCNs. Now, uh, at the time of making this video, I am very much sort of early, so I haven't seen a lot of other people's opinions. And I'm going to... I've seen a few people talk about it on Twitter, and they've said that this is sort of typical of Google and YouTube crushing smaller channels. Um, but I don't think it is. I actually think this is a really good move and I'm going to explain why. Um, so basically, uh, if you, let's say you've met the minimum threshold of a thousand, um, subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, uh, you're not really, you know, if you, if you just meet that threshold or you're near about it, you're, you're really probably not making much money. You're probably making about $5 or pounds a month. And that's not making anyone a living, not even close. And you're almost certainly putting more than the half an hour's, you know, equivalent of minimum wage work into that video. So to me, it does actually make a lot of sense. Small, like when people are using the word smaller creator, that kind of needs a definition because that a lot of people are saying smaller creators as in those with less than a thousand subscribers, right? But if you're a channel that intends on making any real amount of money through monetization, uh, 1,000 subscribers is is really like not enough. And it, to be honest, if your channel is going to uh, grow and, and, and make any real amount of money, the first 1,000 subscribers, um, you sort of have to get on your, you know, like like that that shouldn't be too much of a problem if your content is good enough, it's discoverable enough, and enough people want to connect to it. I'm not necessarily saying that the first 1,000 subscribers are easy to get to in all cases, but I think it took me probably about a month for for me to get my first 1,000 subscribers on my Game of Thrones channel. So if you do actually, you know, if you are making content that people want to watch, you'll have no problem meeting that threshold. What this threshold, I believe, cuts out are people who make a handful of YouTube videos and then sort of pack it in after a while. If you were, if you were, if you were a dedicated YouTuber, 1,000 subscribers and um, 4,000 hours of watch time, if that's your goal, if your goal is to get views, because of course not every YouTuber's goal is to get views, that's incredibly important. Like I say, three of my channels remain unmonetized, and of course there's always the Patreon option, which a lot of people are turning to now as just a more secure revenue stream. 
or you know, and also as a supplementary system as well, like uh, like what I'm using it for. So basically, what I'm saying is that channels like mine, where they're making a sort of a reasonable amount of money. In fact, the money made from the monetization on this channel is is a pretty essential part of my overall income. And things like the adpocalypse actually affect me a lot more than. Um, what I sort of led on. Now I'm a uh, science and technology channel, and I'm very uncontroversial. So I, when when adpocalypses tend to happen, I tend to be on the safer end of them. But we've had like three of them now, and this this Logan Paul thing, it's 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 you know it's a storm that is getting more and more difficult to weather every time it comes through. And one of the things that YouTube have been really legendarily good at that no one ever gives them credit for is actually being able to drum up the advertisers like YouTube has billions and billions and billions of dollars coming in from advertisers from all kinds of companies small businesses big businesses non-profits you name it selling advertising is one of the most difficult things you can do because in for, in, in for example with my with this channel that you're watching now i get a uh, offer for a um, sponsorship about once somewhere between once a week and once a month and i've never taken any of those offers because they're always shady companies that are trying to make a quick buck off the naivety of a millennial it seems so um i've you know or, 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 or you know and, and they're out there to take advantage of you as much as they are to take advantage of me they're out for it for themselves and they exactly um you know great companies in fact i get a lot of offers of sponsorship from people who make software only for windows uh, which is a bit silly as well but anyway uh, that aside smaller channels making uh, five dollars a month is is sort of withdrawing money out of that pocket and um with you know and, and there is only you know with, with advertisers pulling out of youtube uh the amount of advertising money to go around is 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 reducing it's it's getting smaller and so not only do youtube have to make like serious serious changes and this is why they're hiring like ten thousand people to um uh, moderate the preferred advertising videos but they're also raising this 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 bottom threshold here and to me that i think you know that i think that's going to help like a lot of like what i consider smaller creators like this channel steady up the advertising revenue so that um it, it you know it, it allows me to stay here because if you're only making like five dollars a month the money isn't what's keeping you on youtube it's it's the passion for it and the money is kind of maybe you know it's uh you might be able to get some expenses for it you might be able to buy a nice drink or or some travel expenses to re, you know to record for it it's a nice little you know a bit on the side whereas for someone like me and for other channels like mine it's probably there's a little bit more uh, of a consequence in when these advertising mishaps happen and also when you've got smaller channels that, that, that don't have many subscribers doing incredibly um outrageous things and still managing to latch onto a to an advert, that overall harms the the ecosystem as well. And it, I think it does help if you do have this bar of minimum quality before you can actually um, monetize your channel. And even with all of this in play, right, this still gives us it's so much more freedom than you ever get on any other broadcast medium. And I think that's really important to bear in mind. So. Um, so yeah, I think, um, and I am making this argument entirely out of self-interest because, um, yes, it is effectively, um, shoring up the available, um, advertising revenue that's coming into YouTube now and handing it over to, uh, or dividing it amongst the channels that have a certain amount of mileage and support behind them already. Uh, but like I say, popular channels, I mean, there should have not too much of a problem to find the first, uh, 1000 subscribers if gaining views and subscribers is a specific goal of your channel. Like I say, there are plenty of channels out there that want to grow organically, naturally, aren't too worried about the money. Obviously, this is going to affect them, but it's not going to affect their ability to make videos as much. So I think that this is a, this is actually an example of YouTube correcting an issue without overcorrecting it. And I think that's a rarity and I welcome that. Now, like I say, YouTube have not been kind to small creators like this channel, like many other channels of this size over the past couple of years. And a lot of it has just been uh, problems handed down from, you know, YouTubers uh, that have basically pissed off advertisers. It's as simple as that. It's all about the money. And, um, and, and YouTube has an image problem right about now. And that affects the bottom line. And that affects 
thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands, if not millions of creators. And um, and and I think this this might might just be a might just be a a step in a, in a, in a good direction. They've got a lot of PR work to do. They've got a lot of uh, of damage to uh, to repair. But the thing is, there really isn't a substitute for YouTube, and it's not because YouTube can hold all of these videos. Well, it's part of that because no company can even match them. But really, if I put, I can put my video up on Bit uh, Bitchute, and it just won't get the viewership. YouTube brings the viewers. Um, it's the place where people congregate. It's the town square. And if I don't like the town square, if I find the town square, you know, um, oppressive or offensive, yes, I can go around the corner to the, you know, arse end of nowhere and still continue making my content. But to be honest, I don't really want to put time and effort into videos if only a small handful of people are only ever going to watch them. I don't want to ever be those, you know, that, that person where views and subscribers are ever really important. And I'm very um, glad that I've actually managed to foster this channel very, very organically. There might be a YouTube competitor to take over, but unless it's got some kind of, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer technology behind it, I think that uh, that anything that resembles VidMe is uh, a DOA. I think so, uh, and. Um, just before I leave you now, I think that it's, I, I want to air one of the, the big issues that I have with, with YouTube. I'm not going to make a video where I'm going to say that YouTube did everything right. Um, is how the, like the attitude of monetization that not only the bigger YouTubers have like Joe can, uh, like Logan and Jake Paul, who just, you know, aggressively monetize their merch to, to young children. But, if you have ever been on any of the YouTuber creator courses and academies and, you know, sessions and stuff like that, YouTube will generally encourage you to try and basically uh, turn your channel into a form of a, like a, into a cult, basically. They, you know, they encourage you to give a special name to your subscribers, to, uh, to, to, you know, to sell merch, to get a brand, to get a logo stamped into your consciousness, to get you ruthlessly loyal and, um, and, and defensive and, uh, you know, and, 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 and to basically sort of bring you into a fold in a very cultish way, because um, that's just a, a very good way of retaining viewers and, and, and making money. And it's something that I have a deep, deep problem with. And a lot of channels engage in this kind of cultism behavior of just um of of, of just um of just basically trying to find a, a group of people and just like ring them in like their cattle and and that is something like i don't like doing but i feel that i am in some way protected from this because i don't consider you guys to be a community for this channel i consider you guys to be part of and i include myself in this as well part of the open source Linux tech community, the, the sort of the inclusive tech community, the tech community that want to fix and build things and, uh, and, and make tech better and, and just, you know, get that thrill of, 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 you know, disassembling a radio and putting it back together, you know, and, and that's, that's not nowhere near exclusive to this channel. That's, there's millions of people the world over. And I feel a part of that larger ecosystem, which is why I've never been tempted to sell merch. I mean, what would I sell? You know, I, I, I think that the well, when we look at imagery and logos and merchandise, I think if you're going to stick a logo on a T-shirt, put your favorite distro on there. You know, don't like nothing. I, you know, I'm not iconic enough to, to warrant printing a T-shirt for what a ridiculous sentiment is that. And it's not like T-shirts make that much money. That's why you have to so aggressively sell them. And, um, and it's something that I have a, it's something that, that makes me feel very, very uncomfortable. In, you get it a lot with political channels. And this, the, it irks me more with political channels than anything else, because you get these very loud, very aggressive people, so sure-footed in their opinions. However, that aggression and, and all that shouting into a camera isn't going to change anyone's mind. It's not designed to. It's designed to, uh, to rage up your base. Um, it's designed to make your base angry, and it's design it's designed to 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 turn your channel into like a family, into a cult, into a pride, where you know uh, you you have uh, enemies, where you have pe you know adversaries, where you have all this YouTube beef. You have a them and us mentality because a them and us mentality is great for bunkering down and making money. And what's even better on YouTube side, the them and us, both on the YouTube platform, YouTube make money, you know, day in day out. It's easy.
It's like, you know, they, 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 they benefit off the conflict. They benefit off, off, off the Logan Paul scandals. They benefit off, 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 off so much of this. And, um, and admittedly, admittedly, it's an irresponsible way to run a business because admitted, even though YouTube are benefiting from this reckless abuse of, um, having the attention and eyeballs of so many people, they're acting recklessly for short term gains and it's making the long term future of YouTube questionable. So this is why I made this video is because I'm quite, quite excited or at least somewhat positive, uh, feel positive that this decision, although it will be unpopular by many people, might actually really be a step in the right direction for the, the, the fiscal sustainability of YouTube. So, uh, I think I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to let you guys, uh, uh, well, hash it out in the comments because I'm sure this will be something of a, um, an interesting topic to discuss. I don't think it, I don't know how controversial it might be, but, um, but it might be quite interesting to discuss and just to sort of, uh, examine the perspectives of, of lots of different YouTubers because I'm, you know, one of many and, um, and I'm a small YouTuber that. So, um, anyway. That's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.